uh, it's uh, really my honor and privilege actually to present in this webinar. And yeah. I am very much delighted to have there are some legends of neurology in this country, and some of them are my teacher. I was very much delighted to have them. Dr. Adnan, and, yes, and also, and also, uh, I would like to thank uh, Society of the Neurologists of Bangladesh for giving me the opportunity to present in this webinar. So I now I am sharing my screen. Can you hear the? Can you see this screen? Yes, yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. So today's talk is actually is very pertinent talks is because the this COVID-19 pandemic is now is, is very devastating conditions is around the globe. And so as a neurologist and practicing neurologist, there should know the neurological manifestations of the COVID-19. So uh, this talk is about this. Now, before uh, uh, starting my presentation, I would like to remember all the doctors and the healthcare workers has been the frontliner, which has been which they sacrificed their life in this fight against this deadly virus. And my tribute to all of them and my salute to all of the heroes, they are really heroes. So uh, in my talks, I will be confined to, to a past brief introductions of the SARS-CoV-2 and the neuro neurotropism and the pathological mechanism and the some neurological features that has been uh, definite for the COVID-19. And then I will highlighting few, will be highlighting few important manifestations that we which we encountered. And then the few case history with imaging. And finally, if you uh, to finally a few talks about the neurologic care in this pandemic. So all you know this, the, the COVID-19 is the pandemic now, and with the journey of this virus that started in the Wuhan in the seaport market in the late December 2019. And then gradually from human transmissions, this virus has been spreading throughout the world. And nowadays, more than 200 countries of the world has been affected by this virus. And a lot of things has talked about that this magnitude of the problem of this virus is actually, uh, it is a big pandemic after the Spanish flu in the previous century. Uh, and the WHO at the 11th March, declared this coronavirus as a pandemic. And coronavirus has been, previous coronavirus has already, we know that the SARS-CoV in the 2003 and the mars COVID in 2012, these two coronaviruses, the similar, uh, more or less similar characteristics of the SARS-CoV-2. But the previous two coronaviruses, the, the worldwide, this devastating effects are not, this is not causing. And this is the uh, graph from the from yesterday, the WHO graph. That is, more than 13 million people has been confirmed cases has been so far, and near about the six lakh deaths. It's a huge number. And day by day, this curve is rather than declining, it is still up going. So we are in danger still in this period, and the situation is not. Uh, it's very alarming is also the Southeast Asia region. If you see this dark blue, these are the Southeast Asian region. There is a very, very steadily, there is an increasing amount of the cases. So, and also in Bangladesh situations, this is the weekly report from the WHO, just published in 30th July. Uh, one lakh eighty eighty six thousand. but actually yesterday, we have crossed the two lakh barrier affected cases and near about 2,400 casualties dead. So we are in very, very situations. Now we just, uh, just before the neurological manifestation, I'll just, just a few talks about the structure. All we know this, this structure is the coronavirus, it's been turned as the crown, uh, it's like the crown, so this name is a corona. And we know they have some structural proteins, some non-structural proteins, some auxiliary proteins. The most important thing is the four structural proteins in the surface, that is the enveloped proteins, the hemagglutinosterase, HE, and the spike glycoproteins, and also in 
inside the RNA strand is single, it's RNA virus, the single strand RNA virus in the nuclear capsule. And among these pathogenesis of this virus is pathogenesis, or we know that this virus is human to human transmission is possible by the respiratory droplets. And respiratory droplets is actually more than five microns in diameter. And also this virus can be transmitted by the direct contact, all we know about this by indirect or direct, you know, fomite forms. And the thing is that the droplet nuclei, that is, we call the aerosols, it is to be debate whether this virus can be transmitted in the aerosol or persistent from the coughing and sneezing, whether this virus can uh, be persist in the air for a longer period of the time. There are so many questions about it. And there are also some route of transmissions has been, uh, is working. The scientists are experiencing this. As because it's very new virus, everything is just experiencing. And this is the 3D picture dimension like pictures of the spike protein. That is the spike protein is the main protein that is the pathogen for the pathogenesis of this virus is because the spike protein is combined to the host cell in the SC2 receptor. The spike protein is combined to the SC2 receptor and, and gain entry to the cell and exerts its pathological effect. So it's very important. And whenever the SARS-CoV-2 enters into the cell through the SC2 receptors in the, in the cell, and the spike protein fits in the SC2 receptor, then internalization by endosomes or by the uh, internalizations, then this uh, viral RNA has been released. And after releasing the viral RNA, this by translations of the viral proteins, and this translation causes replications in the more and more RNA. And this RNA then incorporated so the new proteins, and they're from the endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus, the each RNA is enveloped by the new protein and the cells has its own protein making machineries and there are uh, other replications of the new virions and then this exocytosis, they, they just come out. This is the actual the pathological mechanism to gain entry the, in the different type of the cells. And a very uh, in, in, uh, important thing is that the SC2, you know, the SC2 has the receptor site and also the SC2 have, we have the SCE receptor site with the SC2 and normally we know that the SCE is actually, it mediates the angiotensin two productions. And through the angiotensin two, it causes the AT1 receptor activation, which actually causes the acute lung injury and injury to the other systems. And the SCE2 mediated pathways, it actually it causes the degradations of the angiotensin two production. So there is a balance always in our body. So that's the normal homeostasis is taking place, but if the SC2 is occupied by this virus, by the S protein, there, there is a down regulations of the SC2 receptors. So, and this, so that the angiotensin 2 pathway by SCE has been up, it's been upper hand. So the devastating effects of this virus is taking place. So this is the actually the pathology, all you know about this. And in the symptoms of the COVID-19, this WHO has the mentions these are the symptoms and all we know about the symptoms is some constitutional features, which is the very common for any viruses. There is a fever, malaise, dry cough, tiredness is very common. And also day, as the day progresses, there are new symptomatologies has been arises and WHO, CDC, the, the, they are also documenting some of the new uh, new symptoms. That is the diarrhea, vomiting, body ache, malaise, unexplained, unexplained fatigue. So everything can occur. So there is a huge symptomatology. And among them, some neurological symptoms as well. It has been documented by the WHO. This is the normal, uh, it's occurring the virus. Now, what is the concern about the nervous system in the COVID-19? What is the impact of this uh, nervous, impact of this COVID-19 and SARS-CoV-2 in the nervous system. It's just, it's, it is the matter of the debate. And also there is a lot of researchers, the scientists, the physicians is doing a lot of researches about the magnitude of the virus in the different systems as this virus can actually uh, affecting the different systems of the body and the nervous system is not out of this. And the, as we mentioned earlier that the SC2 receptor is the main entry site so the SC2 receptor expressions is very important, where the SC2 is expressed. Uh, normally we know that the lungs, hearts, and blood vessels, kidney, it is thought that the SC2 receptors is mainly uh, uh, expressions there, but the scientists then are actually, they 
found that there are so many organs in the body that this causes they see two expressions, including the nervous system. So the question is arises, is this virus is a neurotropic or not? As experience from the previous two coronaviruses, that is the SARS-CoV-1 and actually SARS-CoV, to be honest, and the MARS-CoV, the scientist has experienced that those two viruses, as there is some neurological manifestations, they can gain edge to the nervous system and causing the damage to the nervous system. And as because the SARS-CoV-2 had the structural and genetic similarity with the SARS-CoV, already know that the it had a 70 to 80 percent similarity with the SARS CoV 1 and 60 percent similarity to the SARS So, it's expected that this virus can have some neurological manifestations because the virus is neurotropic, you can say. And there are a lot of studies, and this is going on, and every week, you know, their papers is publishing. And this is two papers that they actually, it's very important paper, the highlighting about the neurotropism of this virus. and Previously, uh, it was thought that we, we have some circumventricular organs of the brain, that is the CBO, which is the divide of the blood brain barrier. And previously, it is thought that these organs, that is the <coughs> area posterior, <coughs> excuse me, area posterior, pineal gland regions, subcornicial regions, and the organ of vasculism, these are thought to be, these are the divide of the blood brain barrier. So, this, <coughs> they express the blood AC2 receptors. But this paper is published recently, it's an Adil S. and et al. And they actually showed that the nervous system has in the neurons, the microglia, neurons and the glial tissues have actually expressed the uh, SC2 receptors. And also the structures in the brain and spinal cord, there is a wide range of the structures in the brain and spinal cord so that will express the SC2. And also the vascular endothelium is also the another side where the SC2 has been expressed. So there is a widespread expression of AC2. And now what is the proposed mechanism? The, we know that the AC2 is the binding site of this virus by the SCO2. Now how they gain entry to the nervous system? The mechanism was proposed is that there is scientists are really experiencing these things it's because this virus is new and there is nothing has been very much studied or even known to the scientists and physicians. So the day, as the day progresses, they're experiencing them. And they, are, they actually found that the retrograde transfer to the olfactory epithelium, this is the main entry routes of the virus in the nervous system. And, you know, the WHO and CDC they established the anosmia, has been the, the symptoms of the, uh, this virus <coughs> illness. So olfactory epithelium is the entry sites. And from there, through the kibriform plate of the ethmoid, this virus gain access to the nervous system. And then the disruptions of the blood brain barrier, the bus blood <coughs> from the hematogenous route, where the viremia stays, this virus can gain access to the nervous system through the disruptions of the blood brain barrier. And also, this virus can affect the invasions of the peripheral nerves. And from the peripheral nerves to the axonal transport, retrograde or retrograde, this virus can gain access to the nervous system. So these are the three mechanisms in established where the virus can gain access to the nervous system. Now, after gaining access to the nervous system, this neuropathological mechanism, how they damage this internal nervous system or the peripheral nervous system. So damaged can be caused by the direct infections of the injury. It can be occurs in the not only the CNS, it can also occur in the peripheral nervous system, in the muscular system. This virus can, can directly can the virus can causes injury to this site where the virus can exist. Hypoxic brain injury is there, it is the indirect uh, pathology which can affect the nervous system. As you know, the hypoxia is the main thing where the virus is because the virus main effect is in the respiratory system. And the most of the people are suffering severe and moderately severe and critical illnesses, the respiratory type of illness, the severe ARDS, but the hypoxic injury is the main thing. And is there a hypoxia? Then all you know that the hypoxia can cause the atypic depletions, can cause the anaerobic glycolysis promoting that can cause the calcium induced, uh, that's a free radical induced injury. There's so many things that can occur. So hypoxia is the systemic phenomena which can affect the nervous system in an indirect way. And then most important thing is that the cytokine storm, which is a lot of things has been talking about the cytokine storm. The cytokine storm is actually the when the virus affects the uh, different organs of the body, different 
<clears throat> organs, then the against the virus, there is the immune system has been come into play to mitigate the virus. And then the adverse effect of that immune system, which is uncontrolled way of the immune system, dysregulated immune systems can cause in the cytokine store. There are a lot of the inflammatory cytokines, inflammatory mediators, a lot of things can actually do harm to the nervous system. And they actually, what they, they, they do, they do the vascular leakage, and we know the vascular leakage, and the vascular is a mediator induced vascular leakage, cellular induced vascular leakage. And then the activations of the different complement, as because the evidence by the lack of the complement factors in the blood. And then the coagulation cascade is activated. So there is widespread coagulations, the thromboembolic manifestations, and then the disseminated intravascular coagulation is the devastating effects. And also the end organ damage, and finally the end organ damage, the multiple organ damage. So all of these can secondarily affect the nervous system. So these are the important things. And this is the picture of a cytokine storm. As you know that the, the both the innate immunity at first, and the, both the cell mediated and humoral immu immunity then come into play. The natural killer cells and the CD4 and CD8 cells that has been depleted. At the same time, we know that these are the uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines sets from the TH17s, and this, all these things has been uh, increased, level of the increased in terms of the severity of the illness, the moderate illness, there is, a, there is the mild increase of these mediators, and severe disease, there is a huge increase of these mediators, interleukin 6, 2R, 10, T1, and T5. At the same time, there is anti-inflammatory cytokines, there is interferon gamma, there is also declining of the interferon gamma. So all of these things can occur it is the cytokine storm, this devastating effect in the nervous system as well as the different systems in the body. World Federation of the Neurology has implements there are a bunch of the scientists around the globe, the different countries, they are asked to meet and they, they finally in this, in this journal, they, they published the actual neuropathological mechanism of this coronavirus. SARS-CoV-2, this is, is like that. The virus, as we mentioned earlier, this virus reaches the SC2 receptor in the nasal epithelium when the systemic infections has been, it is the, the, the contact, the contagion, and this anosmia is the result. And most of the cases, half of the cases, the defense mechanisms control the infections. And our legal doctors, in that cases, patients have experienced only anosmia. But in the other cases, the remaining half of the patients, the virus neurotropism is taking place. The virus invades the brain via the axonal transport to the rhinencephalon, rhinencephalon, and then virus gain access to the brainstem actually, and can cause the respiratory failure. And this respiratory failure is distinctly different from the respiratory failure that is being proposed by the respiratory system, the hypoxic mediated respiratory system, the ARDS. And then this term has been very popular by right, the generalized endothelialitis. And they found that the, the endothelial cells, the endothelium is expresses the SC2 receptors. The SC2 receptors mainly in the alveolar cells, but it also lining the endothelial cells. And this generalized endothelialitis, that is the inflammatory actions in the endothelium can cause a widespread damage. It can be damage to lungs, heart, kidney, intestine, the different aspects of the body that causes the multi-organ failure, by the inflammation, inflammatory mediators, can causes the devastating effects, coagulopathy, prothrombotic state, and the widespread viral infections of the vascular endothelium, and actually they increases the risk of the blood clots, that is the pro-coagulant <coughs> pathway, and uh, sorry, the uh, coagulation effect, and the widespread coagulation and thrombotic manifestations actually is a risk factor for the cardiovascular and cerebrovascular access. So this is the proposed very mechanisms of the pathology. Now, the virus can, as we showed that the virus is a neurotropic, can damage the nervous system. Now, after damaging the nervous system and doing its uh, the pathological effects, then neurological features of the viral infection, some manifestations, that is the our neurological system can manifest some way by viral infections. It can be by direct or indirect. And then we can have the post-infective uh, neurotropy, just neuro, neuro, 
neurological manifestations, post-infectious neurological manifestations. There are some, as with autoimmune mechanisms, as you know, that the, any infectious causes, the neurological system can be manifested by autoimmune mechanisms. And also the, some manifestations of the systemic infections of the virus, and along at the same time, this patient having some neurological comorbidity. So neurological manifestation can be expressed in different ways according to the pathology. And this is the common the, the CNS features, uh, headache, dizziness, ataxia. These are the mild features and alteration sensorium, that is the depressed mental status, delirium, encephalitis, stroke-like manifestations, seizures. These are the severe, serious complications. Peripheral nervous system having the peripheral nerve involvement. We saw the anosmia and hyposmia. Uh, it's already discussed, and also the agosia or hypovisia. There is a less la lack of taste, and also the viral gain access to the uh, <coughs> epithelium of the tongue, and also the cranial nerves. And peripheral nerve manifestations can be by GVS and Miller Fisher varieties, some um, cranial nerve involvement, even the poly multiple cranial nerve involvement. And there is also the skeletal muscle injury by, by the mild form, the myalgia, proximal weakness, and also the severe form the abdomyolysis. And this this uh, paper actually actually shows that is the mild illness, mild symptoms. There is headache, hypospia, anosmia, muscle pains, and the alteration of the consciousness level, coma, pyramidal signs, stroke, muscle damage. All these are the severe forms of the systems. There is an interesting article in the published in American Academy of the Neurology, and they say that as this pathology has already discussed that. The CNS and PNS have the direct viral involvement, can cause the cell death or dysfunctions, and can cause the encephalitis and some peripheral nerves anomalies, as a symptomatologies. And this is the systemic disease that is the indirect effect of the nervous system by multi organ failure, widespread coagulopathy, widespread inflammations can cause actually cerebrovascular disease and toxic and metabolic encephalopathy. And then the post-infectious cause is actually immune-mediated, as I mentioned earlier. And this is the article is to be mentioned, is that it is a, it is a large clinical systematic review. They actually 42 articles from case series and case reports, and they found the 903 patients with neurological features. <clears throat> Sorry. And among these 903 patients with neurological features, they found that the maximum patients said neurological features is due to the direct viral in 26 patients. And this can be in the widespread, that is CNS and PNS manifestation. If you see the left side, in the CNS, there is diposmia, anosmia, optic nerve, that is the second nerve, optic nerve injury can occur. Online cars, that is the respiratory, that is central respiratory apnea, apnea syndrome, that is online cars, meningo encephalitis, myelitis, and also the peripheral nervous system. And they found the some patients that is the 51 patients they found that is the due to secondary to the systemic illness that is the mainly the cerebrovascular disease and seizures and very few patients they found the post-infectious neurological symptoms mainly the autoimmune para-infectious and post-infectious pathologies the myelin. so this is the this is the <coughs> article it's been to be pointed out and so it's the same thing and skipping this now we have another thing is that there have there is other side of the coin as well is because there are so many studies has been uh, published but what is the evidence evidence should be neurotropism of virus and the neuropathological features we should have the clinical evidence in the autopsy findings that is the confirmatory things that this virus can be neurotropic or not there are so many studies few studies have said that yes the viral rtpcr is positive in the frozen section of the brain sections it can be found in the CSF of the blood, CSF in the CSF. So there is evidence that this it is the neurotropism. But this article is published in New England Journal of Medicine. They are actually they studied about the 18 patients. Both the patients died due to coronavirus disease, and they died between zero to 32 days. All the patients were positive for the SARS-CoV, and the initial neurological symptoms were very non-specific. But these patients have the widespread comorbidities, that is the diabetes mellitus, hypertension, CKD, even one patient has a neoplasm as well. But interesting thing is that all the histological examination, the brain patient, they only found the hypoxic changes, which is the indirect effect of the nervous system. They did not find any clots in the blood, 
in the in the autopsy findings. So th there is a so there is a there is always a controversy whether this virus neurotrophism is to is to the virus came direct or due to the secondary effects. But some studies have shown that they found in the brain section the virus is present. So there is also controversy. There are a lot of things and a lot of studies have carried out. And after a few months or a few months, actually, can we will be sure that this virus actually what can do? Uh, there is a now the clinical manifestations as we mentioned. So though we mentioned all the clinical manifestations in the nervous system, and this study is from the Spanish populations. They diagnosed the COVID nineteen in Spanish populations in the March, and they studied over the 841 patients. And among them, the 512 patients were severe and 329 patients were non-severe illness. Severe means the terms of the respiratory severity that you, that you actually severity is classified, the, not the neurological severity. <clears throat> and, you know, the if the age distribution, that is the severe patients were more older, than the non-severe illness. And they, they find the conclusion is that the neurological manifestations are common in the hospitalized patients. More than half of the patient presented with some forms of the neurological features. And this is the study summary of this, that particular study. You know, there are widespread of the neurological manifestations. And some of them are non-severe cases, some of them severe cases. So the non-specific manifestations are more in the non-severe cases. But the altered level of consciousness, seizure, they are more in case of the severe illnesses. There are also muscle disorders, cardiovascular diseases, and also the stroke-like presentations was not very much. There are also some neuropsychiatric manifestation as well. And this is the study is actually, it is the, <clears throat> the study, this maximum research has been taken as, a, as an example. It is the study from the Yuhan. This is the first neurological manifestation studies in the Wuhan, China. They studied over the 220, 214 patients from January to February. In the three designated centers in the Wuhan. And they found that the non-severe patients were 58%, severe patients was 41%. And this is the study result. You see the 36.4% patients having the neurological manifestations. And this is the red, red lines, that is the <clears throat> impaired consciousness, cerebrovascular disease, and skeletal muscle injury. They are significantly higher in the severe group of the illness. And they also show the widespread of the neurological illness. So there is a there is a lot of lot of neurological manifestations has been taking place. That is the evidence. So <clears throat> the scientists from the Wuhan experience is that. The neurological symptoms can present actually without the typical presentations of the COVID-19. That is, this patient can present by only neurological symptoms. They found that some patients. And initially, patients with non-specific symptoms, and then patients can typical symptoms with the cough fever. And in severe cases, they found that the elevated D dimers in most of the cases, and which indicates the microvascular microangiopathy, as you mentioned, that the, there is widespread the vascular damage. And also the coagulation cascade has been activated, and that is the <coughs> coagulation prothrombotic mechanisms. There is embolism in the pulmonary embolism, and all the embolism in the different sites, myocardial infarction, stroke-like presentations. And they actually recommended that the uh, the blood CK measurement and D dimer level measurement is documented in the severity of the illness. And this study is from the 58 patients of the ICU patients, that is a severe disease, the ICU patient study. And they found that the, they have the delirium, corticospinal tract sign, these executive syndromes, and there is a widespread abnormalities in the brain MRI and also the CSF studies. This is the severe patient study in the 58 patients. And as we mentioned earlier, that there are a lot of studies is going on. And in every week, there are a lot of papers is published. It's because this virus is actually touching with every system of the body. So different, uh, different subspecialties. The scientists, the researchers, the physicians can actually publish in so many studies. And maximum studies is the observational studies, this is case, case studies, case studies. But the problem is that there is no actually scope of the case control study or the, the prospective studies is because from, so from this, there are a lot of studies. These studies is specifically for the neurological manifestation. There are a lot of studies. I'm just uh, showing the few studies. I'm not going to details to this. 
Now, if we go to the some specific disorders that are actually very much common in the neurological manifestations, anosmia, as I mentioned earlier, the anosmia has been the direct neuroinvasive effect. Uh, and from the NSP, from the virus, the retrograde neural nerve transport, CNS to the peripheral nerves. And here, there is two, two, two schools of thought. Some scientists say that the, the virus actually affects the nasal epithelium, which is a non-neuronal. And somebody says that this virus actually, it infects, it affects the olfactory bulbs. Both the, both the groups, the scientists have evidence. There still is debate whether this non-neuronal or neuronal uh, mood of the mechanism and from here the retrograde transfer and the most of the patient the 60 to 88 percent patients associated with some source of this main involvement this is the study said and nausea so it's very common manifestation headache always even see there that headache is a very non-specific science you cannot say this is a solely neurological sign it's because headache is occurs so not in isolation it's with other symptoms and as the international classification of headache disorder it's already classified the headache primary attributed viral infection is like that temporal relations to the systemic infections in the improves with the infections and so diffuse and moderate to severe and so headache can be symptoms of your systemic viral infections it can be from other causes is because Headache can be occurred due to encephalitis. Headache can go due to meningitis manifestation. It can be diffuse encephalopathy. It can be due to some uh, hemorrhagic stroke or subarachnoid hemorrhage. So there is a widespread cause of the headache. Stroke is a very important thing is that as the neurologist, we are very much concerned about the stroke. In spite of the fact that the coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 has, there is no, that is not very much huge number of the stroke patients has been documented due to the effect of the coronavirus. There is not a very good number of the patients. But as a neurologist, we we have practicing most of the time with dealing with the stroke patients. So strokes are very important things to, to mention about. And there is wide range of the cerebrovascular manifestations like acute ischemic stroke, intracerebral hemorrhage, central venous sinus thrombosis, all even documented in this. And you know, what are the mechanism of the strokes? Stroke can be occurred in the different you know, these patients having the multiple comorbidities, multiple risk factors, and these patients can affect it when it's source of the stroke. We cannot say that this 100% this stroke is due to the SARS-CoV-2. So there is a different things, but well, specifically, there are some pointing out some pathologies which can be triggered by the stroke due to coronavirus. This is the interesting thing is that the COVID-19 associated coagulopathy, it is likely caused by the inflammations, inflammatory mediators, and the coagulation cascade activations, as I mentioned earlier. Another term has been popular is that the sepsis-induced coagulopathy is because the severe cases, there is sepsis, systemic infections cause it, and this sepsis can, can cause a stroke by its widespread involvement in these different mediators. Cytokine storm, as mentioned earlier, that the cytokine storm can cause the microthrombus formations. All the things can cause the stroke effects and endothelial is also meant to endothelial is another cause of the <clears throat> indirect cause of the cerebrovascular disease and also there is another mechanism that is you know that we have the renin angiotensin system in our body and this ac2 mediated down regulations of the angiotensin system can cause us the stroke and if i if i recapitulate these things that this previous they mentioned that uh, whenever about the ac2 mediated uh, virus entering the cells, we know that we have the two pathways, that is the classical pathways and the alternative pathways. The classical pathway is angiotensin 1, a C-mediated angiotensin 2, this angiotensin causes the H1 receptor activations, which causes the, which actually the pro-inflammatory, it is oxidative stress, pro-thrombotic, and causes the vasodilations. This is the classical pathway. The alternative pathway is actually angiotensin 2, through angiotensin 2 mediated, angiotensin 1, 7, and mass receptor. This is the alternative pathway. And if the pathway is activated, they can counteract this classical pathways. That is, it is the anti, it is the vasodilating effect, it is the anti-inflammatory effect, it is the lack of oxidative states, it is the anti-thrombotic effect. So if the coronavirus, the SARS-CoV-2, is incorporated by the SC2, then the SC2 is down-regulated. So this alternative pathway has been suppressed. So there is a there is over-functioning of the classical pathways, which can causes the widespread effects of the uh, cerebrovascular disease. 
and this is the evidence of the different studies. There is a lot of evidence that is the acute cerebral infarction, blood infarction offers. European Academy of the Neurology is supported this thing. This study is published in the Journal of the Neurological Science in April 2020. And they <coughs> actually shows the acute stroke pathway in the, corona, in, this, in the coronavirus pandemic. And this pathway is actually how the patients should be dealt with. Whenever we deal with acute stroke patients, emergency department trial is very important. And then trial and actually isolated three groups of the patients. If the patient is not suspected, then they will go to the standard acute stroke pathway here. If the patient is suspected and also the corona positive, it is COVID-19 positive, then those the two cases, they go to the hotspot. And from them, there is this typical NGO suit, there is a, there is a secure NGO suit and city machines. And from there, if the large vessel occlusion is found in the angiogram, then it goes to the mechanical thrombectomy or something like that. And if the patient needed general anesthesia, then they go directly to the special ICU dedicated unit. And if this patient is not necessarily general anesthesia, that can be treated in the dedicated COVID-19 medical ward. And the same thing is that if the patient is in large vessel occlusion, and then finally after screening, this COVID-19 is positive, this patient is in need of intubation, the ICU, if they not need the intubation, then goes to be dedicated COVID ward. And if after that, the screening is the negative, then the patient goes to the normal view intensive care. If the patient is intubated and the patient is not intubated, go to the general stroke. So this is the pathway that's been maintained in the acute stroke pathway. And also there is a protective code stroke. It has been mentioned in the stroke AHA journal. Whenever a stroke patients come, previous screening is very important. If the patient is screening is infectious related screening is positive, then they activated the protected code stroke. This protected code strokes means the use of PP, with or without aerosol generating procedures, placing a surgical marks to the patient, and also the utilization of the crisis resource management, that is the safety of the patients, how the patients will be dealing with. So this is the very popular in the acute stroke management. And during the stroke uh, talkings, there are some few things that the overall experience is that five to six percent of hospitalized patients experiencing the stroke, and young patients that being having the stroke, especially the large vessel occlusion. There are so many case series, and there is elevations of the D dimer, fibrinogen, fibrin degradation products, and IV thrombolysis, mechanical thrombotomy is not actually the, there is an absolute contraindicated in the COVID patients, and there is anticoagulation is recommended as a primary prevention. Is there is extreme elevations of the D dimer? And uh, we know that the, there is, we, the following the patients, we do the serial D dimer to see the actual prognosis of the patients. But there is an important thing is that if you use the TPA, this TPA can cause the transient rise in the D dimer. So if patients are getting the TPA, that is, it is not necessary that the serial D dimer measurement is a prognostication, in fact. And then the encephalitis. Encephalitis has, there is a widespread pathophysiology. It is, can, can be autoimmune involvement, can be direct invol involvement with the virus. As because the, their encephalitis patients, the scientists found the RT-PCR in the CSF. And also the, the RT-PCR uh, test is positive in the frozen sections of the brain. So there is a, the evidence of the direct invasion. And there is widespread abnormalities in the CSF and MRI. And there is delirium. You know, delirium is very important things. Delirium, altered mental status, and loss of consciousness, very important things is to deal with the coronavirus era. And it is, it is multifactorial. All you know that the systemic infections can cause the delirium or something like that. There are some metabolic and toxic derangements in occurs in the coronavirus, so it can cause the delirium. Medications, the people, the, the patients are getting a lot of medications, the different medications, they can affect the altered mental status. Uh, CNS dysfunction, seizure and stroke, that is the structural brain damage can cause this CNS this, uh, delirium. And this observation is that the delirium is more common in the advanced age and the common in the hospitalized patient. Delirium is actually often overlooked. And this study has shown that about 20 to 30 percent of the COVID patients experience delirium. This is the study findings. And delirium occurs more in case of the intensive care unit. And in the COVID-19, 
patients. Delirium can be manifestation of the direct CNS invasions I mentioned, inflammatory mediators, cell medication effects, and organ failure, as I mentioned. And any systemic infection can cause delirium and metabolic deranges when you know hypoxemia, hypocarbia, there is some nutritional deficiency can cause medication effects, can cause the delirium. And there are different types of the delirium. I am not going into the details. GBS has been documented in so many studies. There are 18 or 20 case studies has been found. It is the post-infectious mediate, immune mediated injury. There are a few case reports. And none of the uh, CSF has been uh, positive for the RT-PCR in the COVID-19. And also is documented that if the, if the, the neurologist is planning to give in the IVID to the patients, then it's documented that the DVD profile access has been given as because IVID is, is a pro-coagulative pro-coagulative effects. And this, this study has showed that there is the 12 case reports of the GBS, mean age was 62.5 years, and there is the, none of the CSF samples were tested positive. Skeletal muscle injury has mentioned that the direct injury can cause the skeletal muscle injury. There may be the immune mediated injury. And most of the cases, the, the mild sick elevations, this is the mild cases, but in severe cases, severe cases can cause the Rhabdomyolysis, there is huge elevations of the CK. So this, all the things can occur in the skeletal muscle injury. And there are so many studies to document this. Seizure is the important things can occur. You know, the frequency of the seizure is actually low in case of the COVID-19 patient. This is the evidence that not so many patients with the seizure has been found. But as because it is the infectious process, or no, these infections can be the many precipitating factor of the, any kind of the seizure. So greater risk of the breakthrough seizures. And one case report in Italy said that these patients, the COVID-19 manifestation is by only a seizure. It's a one case report has been found. And convulsive seizure should consider as aerosol generating. So providers should be appropriate PPE protections. And in the, in the seizure management, you know, if they think that is the COVID suspected or COVID positive, then the MRI and neuroimaging is an EEG is been is not the very absolute indications. So it's not, there is a definite indication that is discouraging to do these things. But if the patient having the, un, that is the unexplained causes of the conscious unconsciousness, so the, to diagnose the non-convulsive status epileptic EEG can be done. So this is all about the uh, neurological manifestations. Now highlighting some few cases, the interesting cases. A case of the anosmia, this is the 25-year-old female radiographer who's working in the COVID-19 world and presented with a mild dry cough, one day dry cough, and he actually uh, consulted with the ENT specialist. The ENT specialist evaluated, there, there is nothing to be found, and in, including the epithelial maxillary CT. And the same day, the brain MRI was performed, and the nasopharyngeal swab test was positive for the SARS-CoV-2. And the interesting thing is that if you see the MRI, and this is the MRI, this is the coronal sections, so it is clear, and you see the, the gyrus rectus gyrus, there is a hyper intensity, it's the arrow, hyper intensity in the gyrus rectus, and if in the inset you see the olfactory bulb, there is the two teeny dots hyper intensity in the flare sequence, and this is the magnified uh, portion, that is the right side of the gyrus rectus, with the inferior aspect, there is a hyper intensity. Interesting thing is that this MRI is done at day four, very interesting thing is that at the day 28, the same MRI, this patient has complete resolutions of, the, of this hyperintensity. So very interesting things. Cerebrovascular disease, there are a lot of cases of the cerebrovascular disease. This is the case one, this eight three years old female with hypertension, there is a lot of comorbidities of the patients. The patient's presented with fever, facial droop, and spelling of the speech. And patient is febrile, that is, uh, his pressure was 170 over 69. And there is saturation, saturating 94% room here. On examinations, the neurological examination was nothing, only the left facial drop in starting of the speech. NIH score was two. Very mild things. And the CBC show the leuco leukopenia and lymphopenia, and chest structure shows the bilateral peripheral opacities. And city, city brain was done. There is uh, apparently normal CT scan. There is no active in the science of the infarctions. CT and geogram documented no large vessel occlusions. There is a focal, very moderate, mild to moderate stenosis with right MCA. And this COVID-19 PCR was detected in the virus. And, and day three of the hospitalization, this patient developed the 
full blown pictures of the left sided hemineglate oscillating left side patient of the left hemiparesis and his analysis then goes to 16 and then the city had done and this city had so the activity if you see then this is the after four days the city findings there is the frontal and subcortical lesions in part and this is the city and geogram finding there is a point to moderate uh, stenosis in the right MCA, and this is the chest extension bilateral opacities in the lungs. And this patient needs the intubation at last. This is the case two with a 57 years old female. This had this patient only had the peripheral arterial disease, there are no other no risk factors. And these vital signs are that is hypertensive, patient is febrile, patient has the tachycardia, there is 87 percent saturation, and there is inflammatory markers. All the inflammatory markers has been positive, they raised. And CT chest was performed. And CT chest shows that is the, the typical findings of the ground glass appearance. And the CT pulmonary angiogram, there is no embolism is found. On day two, this patient COVID-19 is confirmed by RTPCR. And the still the CT chest findings, I, I'll if you, if you show the things is that this is the day one, the CT chest finding. There is the ground glass appearance in the CT chest. And the CT pulmonary angiogram, there is no embolus is found. In the day two, there is the gradual increase in the ground glass appearance, that is the, the, the pelvic raising appearances, and also the CT angiogram, pulmonary angiogram was negative. But interesting thing is that in the day five, the patients developed the dysarthria, left sided weakness, and neglect. And the CT imaging of the brain showed the no brain hemorrhage, and you see. This is the city brain, it's apparently normal, there is no hemorrhage, but the city perfusion imaging, there is a, so there is a perfusion defect. So there is a mismatch. So, so this patient has been, this patient has been received the IV RTPA. And after 24 hours, the antiplatelet drug was given as a secondary prevention. On the day seven, this patient part of the deterioration occurs. And if you see that the day seven, day seven, his city chest findings has been improved. But this patient's having this, there is a embolisms in the pulmonary, pulmonary vasculatures. So this patient has been transferred to the ICU. This patient is intubated. And this patient having the therapeutic doses of the anticoagulation. Intracerebral hemorrhage is not so many cases. But this case is patient has 57 years old man presented with cough and fever. And evaluation so the respiratory insufficiency. And these, this patient's having also the ground glass appearance in the city chest. On the day five, this patient's respiratory function was deteriorated. And the patient just goes to ICU. Patients has started the anoxapyrin daily. And then seven days after admission, the patient is deteriorates. And if you see that, this is the ground glass appearance, the periphery in the lungs. And this is the widespread cerebral edema. There is the, there is the sarcosiris has not been well documented. And this widespread cortical uh, Hemorrhage. This patient is intubated and patient uh, is deteriorates. So, and then it's interesting thing is that there is a superior sagittal sinus region. There is a evidence of the thrombus in the city findings. Interesting case is that is a young population that is a pediatric group of the patient, the 12 years old boy presented with seizure, hemiparesis, and dysarthria. And this patient tested positive for the SARS CoV 2 nasopharyngeal swab and also from the cerebrospinal fluid. And if you see this MRI of this patient, this is the this MRI finding shows that there is the uh, T2 and flare hyperintensity in the in the putamen, in the lentiform nucleus, in the anterior limb, the internal capsule, and also in the insular cortex. And in the ADC map, there is a hypointensity because of the two rest diffusion restrictions. And also, you see that there is a very interesting thing is that. This interesting thing is that in the, this is the MR angiogram, MR angiogram showing there's a focal, irregular narrowing and bending in the MR angiogram, which is very mildly reduced flow in the, that part of the MCA. So this is the case of the focal cerebral arteriopathy. So it's interesting case. The direct viral invasion can cause the acute hemorrhagic necrotizing encephalopathy. This patient's a female airline worker. In the late 50s, the three-day history of the cough, fever, and altered mental status. This patient initially is negative for the influenza, but RT-PCR in the nasopharyngeal swab is positive. And CSF findings, that was the blood tap. And this patient was 
started with intravenous immunoglobulin, high dose. Steroid has been given. And if you see this patient's CT, the CT there is the hypo intensity over the bilateral thalamus region. The CT venogram and, and the uh, brain imaging, so the arterial imaging has been normal. And if you see this patient, same patient's MRI, this patient's MRI shows the hyperintensity in the medial temporal lobe, hyperintensity in the bilateral thalamus region. And also there is susceptible weight imaging. There is evidence of the, you know, hemorrhagic evidence by the susceptible or GRE sequence. So this is the case of the hemorrhagic necrotizing encephalopathy. Meningoencephalitis, it is the first case of the meningoencephalitis. There is a 24 years old man with generalized fatigue and fever. And this patient was initially prescribed with antiviral drugs. On the day nine, the patient is unconscious and the, is, is taken in the hospital. This patient has neck stiffness, the altered level of the consciousness, his nasopharyngeal swells are positive. And this patient's MRI shows there is the hyperintensity over the, the right mesial temporal lobe in around the ventricles. There is signs of the ventriculitis, you know, this, there, there is hyperintensity around the ventricles. And there is a pan sinusitis in the, in the MRI. So this is the first case of the meningoencephalitis. It is evidenced by the ventriculitis and encephalitis. Uh, white matter changes can be occurred, so diffuse encephalopathy. It is systemic encephalopathy can affect the brain. You know, so this is this is the two patients, one in 54 years, one in 64 years. There is the TW related hyperintensity over the central semiovial regions, you see. And there is also flare hyperintensity, but the DW induced hyperintensity more. This is the diffuse white matter involvement. And this is the case of the acute encephalopathy. It is the maybe this case was the toxic or metabolic encephalopathy because patient having no evidence of the CNS thing. There's the indirect effect. There is a lot of hyperintensity in the different regions, in the frontal regions, in this in the cerebellum regions. So these are the so these are the few cases. Uh, now I am just at the end of the, my my talkings. Now, two more uh, few words I will just mention that. Now, in this COVID era, as a neurologist, we have a lot of things to do. Now, what we should do in the case is because there are a lot of cases has been documented, a lot of cases has been found out. So, what neurologists should do? As because uh, as far as our personal safety, what should we do? We should do the appropriate PPE, which has been documented. You know. In appropriate settings, whether you use the respirator or not, whether we use the only the surgical masks. This is yes, by WHO and CDC definite guideline, and we we'll also have some institutional guideline as well. And then measures to be taken in the hospitals. We can take testing of the virus is the actual is a debate. As a neurological point of view, whenever we deal with the patients, okay, we will we do the all the patients doing the testing of the virus. So it's a matter of debate. There are a lot of controversies, there are a lot of uh, 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 recommendations that these patients should be taken to the virus. But this working formulation, and the scientist thing is that if the patient is suspected or there is, because the community transmission is there, a the, lot of the asymptomatic or asymptomatic cases, so it is it's better to testing the virus to the hospital induced patients. And there is thing is that if the patient is unable to screen due to some encephalopathy altered mental status, and definitely this patient should be tagged as the COVID rule out or suspected COVID patient. It's because the, the histories cannot be ruled out. And convulsive seizure and agitated delirium are always considered the aerosol generating procedure. So the appropriate respirators and measurements have been taken out. And regarding ICU visit, all of the all over the senior professors there, the consultant there, we have to go to the ICU for, from call. So try to think in the, go in the ICU in the, at the end of the round. This is the for our safety and video based consultation is has been encouraged. And every institution has this institutional policy. If you have this national guideline, if you have the WHO guideline, so you implement as well. And this is my last slide. And this actually a very interesting paper has been published in the Acta Neurologia. It is the Martyrs J. D. et al. And this thinks that neurological care during COVID pandemic, what we should do with the neurological care. First thing is that. There is the functional reorganizations of the plan. That is, uh, in our perspective, in, in our country, we have these some um, neurology 
hospitals, we have some specialized hospitals, we have some general medical college, some district hospitals, everyone has limited facilities, everyone has own facilities. So in the COVID era, we should reorganize this, this capacity of these hospitals, what the manpower we have, what the logistic support we have, and what the infrastructures we have to deal with the neurology patients is because some of the cases, the neurology ward has been abolished, the neurology ward has been taken up by the COVID unit. So there is a functional reorganization of the plan in the, according to the uh, hospital authority. And there is the organization of the hospital admissions and neurological emergencies. You know, the, in the COVID era, there is the, some declining of the hospital admissions That's because this patient having the fear of the going to the hospitals. But at the same time, there are a lot of patients is going admitted uh, to the COVID related things. So uh, to highlighting the COVID related uh, management, the non COVID related management uh, is there is a, there is a problems. There is a lot of problems in occurring in our countries also. There is some deprivations of the treatment of the non COVID related things. So hospital admissions and neurological emergencies, the patients come to the neurological emergency and how the patients will deal with and who will deal these patients. Uh, the reorganizations and you know the you have the rotation policies every short short in the manpower is because the some of the patients some of the doctors are affected so you have short of manpowers some of the doctors can go to the internal medicine so you have the short of manpower so you have to reorganize all these things to manage the hospital admissions remote consultation has been encouraged because those the neurological patients who need not come to the hospital very frequently these patients can be consulted by the telephone over the telephone or the online basis it is a very popular things and most of the uh, some of the uh, uh, consultants and professor can doing this so it is a it is a uh, uh, justifiable you know you know the chronic neurological patients is can be dealt with that telephone remote system and there is a secure offsite in the hospital that is this patient some patients will come the neurologic neurological emergencies or the non -neurolog or the neurological non-emergencies if the patients need to be addressed by the by the physician by uh, direct physician contact then the appropriate equipments appropriate precautions and appropriate ppe and appropriate distance and the uh, the how these patients will be dealt with that is the there is a secure offsite should be in the hospitals and in hospital care, you know, the interconnections of the uh, neurology department with the other internal internal medicine facilities, that is the neurologist has been called on to see the patients, the neurologic emergencies or the neurological opinion. So there is a different uh, aspects that the, how the neurologist will deal with these patients and how the personal safety of the measures. So the ultimately patients will be benefited. So all these things can be actually reorganized in the neurological point of view by the national guidelines or the society guidelines or the institutional guidelines. So this is the actually uh, uh, that I have for this presentation. And uh, in these presentations, I've gone through the so many papers and these are some references of these papers. Uh, there are a lot of things that's been going on. And so thank you very much for patient sharing. This is all I had for the today's presentations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Manavan. This was an excellent presentation. And I'm sure all our audiences have enjoyed the lecture. I didn't receive any question from the floor. Is there any question? Before going to the panel discussion? Uh, sir, if you have any question, you can raise your hands or you can write in the chat box in Zoom uh, site. If you have any question, you can raise your hand or can, you can write your question in the chat box. Any question? Uh, sir, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, loud and clear. Sir, really? Uh, this is a master class. Actually, so far the uh, COVID concern regarding the neurology, I think with the neurologist has been benefited and it is an excellent lecture. I have a question. Uh, actually, he has covered everything. Uh, 
maybe I, I, I may miss the thing that he, he has uttered. If so, uh, he cannot give the answer. But if not, uh, I request him to give an answer. Yes, sir. The system of uh, involvement uh, uh, is uh, all over the uh, neurological uh, manifestations, you know. One thing is that sometimes patients of COVID presented with adam like symptom. Uh, uh, I have seen two patients of COVID with, with ADEM. Is there any case report elsewhere yes, where sir. patients of COVID may present with ADEM? Yes, sir. I, I uh, already sir, uh, mentioned that so ADEM is a, is a post infectious neurological manifestation. So it is the autoimmune secure. And there are few case reports of the ADM. I in the case in the case report uh, uh, sections, I actually did not uh, give this case report. There are few case reports of the ADM. That's a typical of the ADM. The typical neuro uh, neuroimaging findings was things that there are few cases of the ADM has been laid out. It is the post-infectious neurological manifestations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Doctor Madhavan, do I have a small question? Sir. Sir. Uh, first of all, this is a very wonderful presentation. I am very amazed to see that that your lecture was very fantastic. Contents you, are very updated, and we have got lots of informations. And the delivery was very smooth and very clear. Really, this is a master's piece. <coughs> and I really clearly see that you have got a very bright future as a teacher. And actually that, do you, have, do you think that there is sufficient evidence that coronavirus itself causes neurological manifestations or is simply a coincidence with other neurological diseases? Uh, it's a very, very tough question, sir. As a, uh, as a, I, uh, I previously, uh, a webinar, I, I watched a webinar. Uh, this webinar was arranged by the American Academy of the Neurology. The same question has been asked by some, some from the audience. And the answer was that, the, the panelist answer was that, we don't know. So actually, sir, these things, this, this virus is, is a new virus. And a lot of things is, it, this, it is occurring. It's because, say, the stroke. This patient having a old age patient, there is a lot of comorbidities, there are a lot of risk factors. If the patient is having the cerebrovascular disease in that particular period, and this patient is COVID positive, then you cannot say confirmly this stroke is due to the COVID-19. It may be a lot of risk factors. But sir, there is working formulation is there. In some studies, they have said that there is a confirmed case that is possible case. Confirmed case is that if you have the evidence of the coronavirus in the RT-PCR, that is the, it is the direct evidence of the coronavirus positives in the blood or in the CSA, or you have the antibody testing is positive, which is the evidence of the coronavirus. At the same time, if you have, there is a lack of documentations of the other causes which can cause the disease. If a lack of these, you can get, this is the confirmed due to the COP2. But if you have the evidence of the coronavirus, the RT-PCR positive or antibody positive, but you have so many other causes of the disease can cause that disease. In that case, you can say this is a possible case. So direct answer, we should actually say, don't know. Sir, I mean, sir, sir, I mean, sir, 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 the report of sir, history of the report of kind sir, see that no COVID or man, man coronavirus or no chino, it is possible. Kind to man, when the data bullo, je man, after pass circumstances, evidence suggest kore, the it may be the consequence or a direct effect from the COVID, sir. Sir, I make sir, I make to the supplement to the report. This all these studies is done previously. All these are the case reports. All these are the observational studies. All these are the case series. There is no case control studies. So uh -huh. if you it is the it is the coincidence or it is the actual effect you have to do the case control study. Still now there is no case control study, so it is very difficult to say whether the actual causes. Uh -huh. uh, Doctor Manavendra, 
Sir. The case that you have cited, is it your case or you have... No, sir. No, sir. I, I, no, no. I, these I, are outsiders. Sir, sir, every, every uh, uh, picture, I give the reference. Reference, sir. Sir, sir every, oh. every picture reference. May I take another question from Asans, Dr. Asan? If a patient present with CVST, how long will continue your anticoagulant? Do you mean COVID patients? Uh, it says, COVID patients. if it, COVID patients are not, I'm not sure. The, the, the normal thing is that the CVST patient at least six months anticoagulation, but if the patient having this, some risk factors like the protein C, protein S, and thrombin 3, in that case, the indefinite period should be. This is the normal generally. But in case of the COVID-19, there is no specific recommendations that, but it's just really mm -hmm. the same things as the other diseases. Any more question from the floor? Uh, uh, Dr. Gurudash Mondal have question, please sir, ask. Uh, hmm. uh, thank you, Dr. Manamendra, uh, for your excellent presentation. Uh, but still today, our in our country, uh, no, uh, due to lacking of our document, practically we are very in a difficult state for our case presentation. But in NINS, we have taken 70 case report and we are trying to do. Hello? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. We are trying to uh, take information considering many variables around from 70 patients. But uh, my question is, uh, already my question is asked by Din Mohammed sir, that whether this stroke is coincidence or, or as a risk factor of stroke, it is- This, this answer is actually given. Yes, but how we can plan, how we can plan in our institute, then whether it is coincidence or due to COVID, it needs, it needs a study. It needs a long study, case control study. Amra ida kibabe plan korte pari. Jene jinil gulo ashole amra kibabe ei meeting e amra ekta plan korte pari. Jena amader ida ashole ida previous one or it is. It needs actually the long prospective study. You are just you taking the documents of the stroke patients and all the risk factors has been has been uh, uh, is collected and then. At the time, sometimes we can say actually what is actually cause is. So, a, a meeting, I mean, on no Amra neuroscience, Amra Kiso, that Amra can take a data up to speak to a collector, Shasta Gursi, Amra Monaco Ashakobo, shop hospital is to the account take a meticulously, the data collect collection Korahoi, Tahale Amade, Porobot, neurological, a publication journal, Amade, Bangladesh journal, helpful hobby, because Amra can take a Neurological data Shate Amade Covit relation card journal plan core Amrazano data glue collection core. Amra neuroscience already Amra start course. It has been a modern hospital, modern hose, modern to Covid hospital, try punch a side din hegase, side din mode, it a case collect core, a can even best cut a case of present core hose with neurological manifestation of the Covid. I made a for information the Edila. Some supplement for Mozart. So, Manuendo did a bullet star, J. Strogulo, Strogulo, the Kagese Kichikichu series, a young age group, like thirty five to thirty seven or forty two, without any risk factors, stroke hoche. So, it's not that the risk factors are necessary to be manifest as a stroke in COVID. So, there could be a stroke other than risk factors, especially when it happens in younger age group. And the pathophysiology is very, very simple that the cytokines released produces the chemokines, induces the coagulation cascades, they damage the arterial wall, and they produce as a stroke. So this could be uh, straightly not possible, not possible then indirectly related to the COVID inflammation. So stroke is very much possible with COVID. Though yes, there is no evidence. Can I can I just uh, can I just uh, barge in? Yes, yes, please. Uh, yes, sir. yes, sir. Yes, thank you. Thanks, admin, to give me the, the chance. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Dr. Manomendra for lecture for all, all of us, and it was a very lively discussion. 
uh, my name is Dr. Mansoor Habib. I was a professor and head of the department, Dhaka Medical College, just to introduce myself. I was just going to answer the question that uh, direct invasion is another thing. And as Dr. Narayan Chandra uh, just mentioned, that there is adequate enough evidence of uh, uh, an explanation also of the thromboembolic manifestation of COVID-19 as explained by Dr. Narayan uh, by cytokine storm and all. And it's not just stroke, ischemic stroke, but it's also MI, it's also other ischemic events like pulmonary infarcts um, have been uh, documented uh, and explained by the um, thromboembolic events by uh, uh, COVID-19 virus itself, as explained by, it, it actually causes a kind of vascular inflammation. So isn't that enough evidence uh, to explain and, it, and also, also that it happens not only in uh, patients with risk factors, but also in younger patients and without any risk factors. Right, right. So risk factors are risk factors and uh, embolic events, uh, thromboembolic events can cause ischemic stroke and other ischemic events as well. So isn't that enough evidence to say that COVID-19 is associated with uh, increased um, uh, risk or uh, incidence of strokes? Yes, sir. So I can supplement, sir. Uh, you rightly mentioned, sir. Uh, there is There are some evidence that the, the neuropathology that has been described, that is the that there is so many causes of the ischemic stroke, even in hemorrhagic stroke in the in the COVID nineteen patients. But the problem is that the question is arises only if the patient having the multiple risk factor of the stroke and this patient having the COVID positive. The problem is lies there. But if the patient is having the no known risk factors, and then we can definitely cause that. Can mention that this stroke is caused is by the from the uh, COVID nineteen. But if the patients have the multiple comorbidities, multiple risk factors, then there is a question that whether this stroke is due to the COVID or due to the other things. And there, there are so many case reports of the young patients with the large vessel occlusion in this stroke. There are so many case reports in the, uh, in the COVID era. Dr. Maravindo, yes. I want to ask some <coughs> questions. Professor, Professor Monsoor, can I respond to your question? Please, sir. Yes. Go on. Thank you very much, Musa. I saw, I saw you after a long time, getting more relaxed in oh, a way possible in the bedroom. Anyway, the it's thing is that you are absolutely right. The statement is true that neurological manifestations are being seen more in COVID patients. This is this statement is agreed by all of the all of all of the authors, but did that not really prove that it is due to COVID infection? They are now trying to find out the association and the causal relationship between the neurology and the COVID. But yet they did not prove it because so far about 56 papers have been published as on yesterday. But none of the papers really claim it is due to COVID. But everybody said plainly that we have seen the evidence of neurological diseases more increase in COVID. They have quite a good number of explanations and one, two, three, four, five. This is still the on the table discussion, not yet decided. Sorry, Malia, I interrupted but, sir, you. Sir, 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 sir <laughs> just, one, just one point before Malia. Sir, hmm. there is, there is sir, uh, just one more thing to uh, I think that it is not proven that COVID causes the stroke. But it is proven that COVID causes the increased thromboembolism. That yeah, that's true. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, yes. Definitely. So definitely that is sir. that is definitely, that is definitely. what we need to agree. That is why need yes. to why uh, what we need to agree. Yes. And yes. then, if in this condition, if COVID is positive and there is stroke, you need to consider that in the management protocols. That is the mo very important point. Thank, Thank you. you, Maliha. Uh, last question, uh, for Maliha. Uh, last. Question. মালিহা বলো
फोन कर बोझारेमोरेज उटोकमर डिप्रेशन any any disease this devastating disease which which has the some um, social and also some uh, important impact in the life so depression is the, is the common is because it, there is a, there, there is a uh, chance of the very severe disease when a patient is affected of this this deadly virus which is the there is been uh, a severe disease then there is then that is the chance of the depressions and it is not actually the neurotropism or other things in the depressions amnesia is not multi multiple factorial this is multifactorial and amnesia the amnesia there is no actually some studies they actually they found this research of the, the post viral survivors the amnesia has been documented it's not the with not so many studies is there so so important thing i can just assure that or i can just say with that there is a problem in the any viruses which is going in nervous system is because the nervous system don't have any uh, msc molecules so the elimination of the virus from the nervous system is solely dependent of the t cytotoxic cells so there is a chance of the remaining of the virus for the indefinite period of time in the nervous system and it can cause as the some neurological sequelae even the virus effect has been passed away so for a Achha, long time the virus can feel ekhane ami ektu add korte chai ekhane ami ektu ghata ghati korechilam সেখানে দেখা গেছে যে এখানে হাইপোক্সিয়া হয় হিপোক্যাম্পাসে এবং মিডিয়াল টেম্পোরাল লোবে ইজ ইট এটা কতখানি আর কি অথেন্টিক ম্যাডাম देयर আর সাম স্ট্রাকচারাল এভিডেন্স অফ দি देयर আর লট অফ কজেস দি হিপোক্যাম্পাস এন্ড দি देयर ইজ হাইপার ইনটেনসিটি না ইন কোভিড ইন কোভিড আই ডোন্ট নো দিস देयर আর এনি স্টাডিজ देयर মে বি স্টাডিজ প্রবাবলি আই মিস দ্য অল দ্য স্টাডিজ বাট ফাংশনাল নিউরো ইমেজিং ইজ নেসেসারি টু সি দি ডিপ্রেশন रिलेटेड ইফেক্টস ইন দ্যাট ওকে দেন হোয়াট অ্যাবাউট সাবারাকন অ্যারাকনাইড হেমোরেজ সাবারাকনাইড হেমোরেজ ইয়েস সাবারাকনাইড হেমোরেজ ইজ ইউ নো দ্য মোস্ট অফ দ্য সাবারাকনাইড হেমোরেজ ইজ ইজ কজেস বাই নিউরিসম এন্ড ইউ নো দ্য সেপটিক ফোকাস দ্য সেপসিস এন্ড ইনফেকশন ইজ রিস্ক ফ্যাক্টর ফর দ্য রাপচারস অফ দ্য সাবারাকনাইড হেমোরেজ সো देयर ইজ এ ইজ देयर ইজ সেপসিস देयर ইজ এ ভেরি চান্স অফ দ্য রাপচারস অফ দ্য সাবারাকনাইড হেমোরেজ ওয়েন উইল ডু দ্য ইনফ্ল্যামেটরি মার্কার inflammatory marker there is the cytokine storms actually the cytokine storms is occurs in the 7 days after the 7 days yes. of, the, of the of the symptoms what about so it, the, in that particular day from this from the 7 days onwards you will find this inflammatory markers what but about in, but, but but about to this if you have the moderate type of the illness you would not you will not get the very high yeah. levels of inflammatory yeah markers. yeah what about clexit mane clexin Anoxaparin is the in, 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 in our national guidelines. Uh, in our national guidelines, these patients is anoxaparin. That is the prevention is documented only the moderate and severe cases. Yeah. It is also documented in the mild cases. If the patient having the one or more risk factors, then you can give the prophylactic dose of the clexin. And this clexin you can give in the five or seven days, and then you can continue the oral. Yes. Okay. Uh, 
ओके आरेख तो क्वेश्चन हो चाहे मैं हाँ तो मिस करते पारी मैडम द द दिस क्लेक्शन इज दैट इफ यू हैव द सीवियर इलनेस यू मस्ट कीप द क्लेक्शन इन द थेरापीटिक डोज नॉट इन द प्रोफाइलेक्टिक डोज या अच्छा आरेख तो जिन्हें जिगेश करते पारी एक नहीं हेमोरेजी की स्ट्रोकेर मैकेनिज्म टाकी hemorrhagic stroke mechanism may, may be endotheliolitis is on the cause endotheliolitis can causes the disruptions of the microcirculation which can cause the hemorrhagic stroke the same mechanism of ischemic stroke can cause the hemorrhagic stroke now transformation and also and also the renin angiotensin system there is a dysregulation of the renin angiotensin system which can cause the drug surge of the blood pressure that increase blood pressure can be expected of hemorrhagic stroke and also the infection is risk factor uh it can transformation of ischemic stroke hote pare othoba consumption of the coagulant maybe maybe maybe, maybe if the if the patient having you have large infarct and hemorrhagic transformations as because you are giving the anoxapirine uh, and, and other drugs that can cause and and um, uh, consumption of the coagulating factor coagulation factors yes madam everything multifactorial there are so many causes thank you very much you are very excellent thank you okay. Let us go for the panel discussion. Let let us hear from the panelists. May I request Professor Pundu to comment? Professor, uh, yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Manimendu, for your uh, well prepared, organized, and smart presentation. I also thank Professor Fridhamath Kureshi for uh, allowing me to speak as a panel expert along with my senior teachers, Professor Anshulak Sir and Professor Kajidin Mamu Sir, Professor Mamu Sir, Ravi Sir. Manvendra has covered almost everything, and I have I don't uh, really treat uh, or manage COVID directly, but I have some experience, and I have gone through some literature as well. Regarding the mechanism of uh, CNS involvement, uh, the, uh, what the what Manvendra has mentioned, in addition to this mechanism, there are uh, possible uh, mechanism by which the to the synaptic cleft. virus can transmits so from peripheral nervous system they can get into the central nervous system like spinal cord so this is possibly another explanation how peripheral nervous system involvement can turn into the central nervous system involvement this is number one and uh, definitely the other mechanism are as well responsible uh, regarding the manifestations of uh, uh, covid he has rightly mentioned that the, there are strokes acute Uh, disseminated in capillary myelitis and possibly the hemorrhagic ne ne necrotizing myelitis but possibly there are other two complications as well may or may not be related directly to the covid the one is the effect of treatment like the anticoagulants or the low molecular weight hep uh, heparin and if you uh, given a maximum dose or therapeutic dose or you if you can continue more than the required it can cause intracerebral hemorrhage so you must take aggregate uh, precaution not to over treat or not to extend your treatment beyond your requirement so this is a uh, experience from where i uh, mentioning this uh, uh, special uh, situation another thing is other than the gbs which is likely to be not only to be post infectious but it could be para infectious as well like the acute disseminated encephalitis myelitis there is another uh, possible complications of treatment that is critical care neuropathy or myopathy and at some times and some point it may be difficult to differentiate between this gvs and critical care neuropathy or myopathy so we have to be very uh, careful to differentiate between these two phenomena and regarding the respiratory failure is not only the hypoxia central hypoxia that is from the sorry from the lungs is not the only mechanism as uh, manavan has mentioned it possibly involves the lower medulla and by which is this the center that controls the heart that controls the uh, uh, our awareness that controls the uh, cardiovascular system and respiratory system as well so the uh, respiratory failure can be a central presentation as well and finally uh, Uh, regarding the uh, investigations for uh, I, in response to uh, professor malia's uh, uh, query this divide should be divided in two categories one is the cytokines evidence of cytokines release or strong and other thing is evidence of coagulopathy so these are two subset of investigations so one one must not amalgamate the everything so first we should see whether there is evidence of cytokines strong if so Then we should go for the evidence of coagulopathy. 
So I have learned many things from Manavendra, and thank you very much for your very smart education. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Kundu. May I get comment from Professor Hasan Ujjaman? Namaskar, sir. Please unmute your option. Uh, yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Hasan Ujjaman. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Manavendra. Uh, for his uh, excellent presentation. I enjoyed it very much. Actually, uh, almost uh, uh, maximum things are uh, covered by each lecture. And uh, 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 frankly speaking, uh, uh, COVID is, uh, uh, is a evolving issues uh, uh, almost today because uh, everything is now changing. What is, uh, what is facts today? it will uh, become uh, negative uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, one uh, thing I have to, uh, I have, I have a, a question to Manavendra, but I, I did not, uh, I cannot, could not ask it. Uh, whether uh, fatigue, fatigueness uh, is uh, responsible, uh, uh, what is the mechanism of fatigue? Uh, many are patients uh, who recovered from COVID uh, complaining of fatigue. Whether uh, this is related uh, with neurological uh, uh, nervous system, uh, I, I don't, I don't know. And what is the mechanism of this fatigue? And uh, uh, other things are almost all uh, are covered by uh, uh, his lecture. And uh, uh, my, I have uh, an, uh, another uh, proposal uh, for all our teachers, our colleagues, to uh, uh, to uh, go for a. Uh, study which uh, uh, by which we can at least uh, uh, document the uh, neurological features in COVID patients in a multi-center basis in our city. And again, thanks Dr. Manavendra for his, uh, for his fine lecture. Oh, sir, just, just, uh, I can uh, give you an answer to this. That fatigue can be a, is a, is a uh, in, infectious phenomena. You know, any viral illness can be presented with the fatigue. It's a non-specific findings. And the thing is that the post-viral illness, the fatigueness, is because there are a lot of cytokines has been deleted. So this may be the effect of the cytokines. These patients may persist with fatigueness. And also there are some muscle injuries. There is some uh, uh, just uh, involvement of the muscles. And all this may contribute to fatigue. Hypoxia may contribute to the fatigueness. Medications effect can can, can be cause of the fatigue. So there are a lot of causes of the fatigue. Thank you, Professor Hasan Jawan. May I request Professor Uttam Kumar Shah to comment, please? Sir, please unmute yourself, Uttam Kumar Sir. Yes, sir. You're audible, sir. Thank you, Manobendro. That is Pahari uh, for his Pahar Shomo uh, address. Hey? For Pahar Shomo address. Hey? Uh, epidemic or pandemic in human history, it's not unusual. Uh, it is usual. Uh, but Bill Gates, uh, one thing he uttered in 2015, that is that if 10 million people uh, will die in the next decade, it is on. It is it is by the virus, not by the war. It is not not due to missile, but for the microbes. Uh, and we have, we have forgotten this. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you to organizer uh, to be privileged me here as a panel, a panel of expert. Uh, I have some suggestion. I have something like this. Uh, we know that 70% uh, COVID case is asymptomatic. Only 30% is symptomatic. And among the 30%, 80 to 85% 80 is actually very mild, did not do any treatment. In this group, uh, have you have we found any post infective post and autoimmune disease like GBS or Miller Fisher or like Edem? Huh? Uh, this is my question not only to the speaker but also the all the panel of experts. That is a lot of group. That is 70% asymptomatic group and the 85% of the symptomatic group. Huh? Is there any evidence of Edem or that is post-infectious, ADM, ADM or GBS, or the post-infectious CNS or, uh, or, or PNS disease, that autoimmune disease. This is one thing. Huh? Another thing is, can we set any criteria? Can we set any criteria like early warning sign, neurological criteria of early warning sign 
uh, earnings and like uh, saturation 93 per, below 93 or 94 percent or uh, exertional dyspnea this time less effort huh? uh, can we predict can we predict any early warning sign like neurological sign if we set <clears> the neurological <throat> sign that is we can can most of the most of the severe covid is associated with neurological disease except some taste and smell loss and the headache huh? so uh, severe covid disease we can we can avoid or we can uh, or we can prepare for the severe covid disease if, if we set any early warning sign especially neurological sign these two things huh? any and another things this is my uh, uh, personal things and to i want to make it make it light this uh, session huh? for this reason i want to make me a host i want to see a presentation that is a re at this, uh, for the presentation so please please give me please, please sir you make can me, make me host Okay, sir. You can share your presentation. No problem, okay. sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please short. Uh, yeah, it's very short. It will be very short. Three minutes. Uh, can first, can you see first, it? No, sir. Can first, you, you, first, you can go to the share screen, sir. Share screen. Share screen. Uh, share screen. Then click, click share screen. Then and found a box. Exactly. Then you can click exactly. Exactly. Yes, sir. Exactly. Huh. Okay, okay, sir. Uh, now you can. This is personally I am requesting Professor Anisul Hawk, who is now residing in England, huh? in England and New and New York, uh, in New York, both of, both the places. They found that DNA is inherited from Neanderthal may increase risk of COVID-19. That is, I am asking like a golf boy, Goli. Sorry, you did not understand. Huh? Golf boy, that is, about three lakh years ago. আমাদের এই অঞ্চলে নিয়ন্থার্ডাল নাম করে নেয়ারলি হিউম্যান স্পেসিস বাস করত আমাদের এই অঞ্চলে ইউরোপের সাথে আর আফ্রিকাতে পাস করতো বাস করতো অ্যানাটমিক্যালি হিউম্যান হ্যাঁ অ্যানাটমি তাদেরকে বলা হতো হোমো সেপিয়ান্স সেপিয়ান্স হোমো সেপিয়ান সেপিয়ান্স আর এই অঞ্চলে যারা বাস করতো এদেরকে বলতো হোমো সেপিয়ান নিয়ন্থার্ডাল এক সময়ে মহা এক দুর্যোগে ন্যাচারাল ডিজাস্টারে আফ্রিকার থেকে তারা সুইচ ওভার করে টু ইংল্যান্ড এশিয়া ইউরোপ অ্যান্ড এশিয়া এইখানে তাদের সাথে এক ধরনের স্ট্রাগল হয় এই নিয়ন্থার্ডাল এবং ইয়ের সাথে হোমো সেপিয়ান সেপিয়ান সাথে এবং এখানে আসলে উইন করে হোমো সেপিয়ান সেপিয়ান্সরা বাট ইন দি মিন টাইম দে আর ইন্টারব্রিড বিটুইন হ্যাঁ এবং আস্তে 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 ট্রু হিউম্যান যারা তাদের ভিতরে এই নিয়ন্থার্ডাল জিন নিয়ন্থার্ডাল জিন ইনকর্পোরেট করে এবং নতুন ইয়েতে দেখা যাচ্ছে যে ইংল্যান্ডে ইংল্যান্ডে যেটা বাংলাদেশি পিপুল বাংলাদেশি পিপুল যারা ইনফেক্টেড হচ্ছে তার ভিতরে সিভিয়ার কোভিড ডিজিজ বেশি তাদের ভিতরে ডেথ রেট বেশি তখন ওরা দেখে যে বাংলাদেশের জিনে নিয়ন্থার্ডাল জিন প্রায় পার্সেন্ট পিপুলে বাংলাদেশি পিপুল সিক্সটি থ্রি সাউথ এশিয়াতে থার্টি থার্টি পার্সেন্ট পিপুল ইউরোপে ফোর পার্সেন্ট পিপুলস আমেরিকাতে এইট পার্সেন্ট পিপুলস আফ্রিকাতে কোনো নিয়ন্থার্ডাল জিন নাই ওদের হ্যাঁ এবং ওদের এক্সপ্লানেশন হচ্ছে নিয়ন্থার্ডাল জিন নিয়ন্থার্ডাল জিন এমন একটা জিন যেটা ইনফেকশন আগে ফাইট করে ফাইট করে কিন্তু ফাইট করে কিন্তু এটা এক্সাজারেটেড ফাইট করছে যার জন্য সাইটোকাইন স্টর্ম হয় এবং এদের ভিতরে ডেথ রেট বেশি বাট প্যারাডক্স ইজ হ্যার যে বাংলাদেশি পিপুলের ডেথ রেট ইস কম বাট বাংলাদেশি পিপুল দোজ ওয়ার ডিসাইডিং ইন ইংল্যান্ড তাদের ভিতরে ডেথ রেট অনেক বেশি এবং তাদের ভিতরে দেখা গেছে ওই নিয়ন্থার্ডাল জিন প্রায় हुगो जब and subhanta palbo era uh, kajolo max frank institute of both are they are the anthropologist and geneticist ha ebong eder ami pohor total paper ta nei nai karon eta holo ashle pre published paper ha jehetu bangladesh niye kotha hoyeche amar ei jonno ekhane interest ta ki a recent genetic a recent genetic study identified a gene cluster of chromosome 3 is a risk locus for respiratory failure in sars cov 2 
recent data comprising 3199 hospitalization covid patient and control reproduce this and find that the major genetic risk factor for the cbr uh, cbr sars covid 2 infection and hospitalization was genetic initiative here we show that risk of the refract of the genomic segment of 50 kilobytes is inherited in neanderthal and occurs in frequency of 30% of south asian people and 8% in europe uttam let us hear from the panelist eta ei arek to ek eta ha the neanderthal haplotypes occur in south asian frequency of 30% europe 8% Among admits the American four percent and in Bangladesh, at least Bangladesh sixty three percent. This is the this is the this is the new model huh? or like so. Huh? I mean, I want to know from Anisul Hawk these reports how it is possible because uh, in England those people are residing among them death rate is very high, but in Bangladesh these people is also residing, but the death rate is remarkably low. one what is the condition Thank they you. already conclude that severe covid disease is associated with the neanderthal gene okay professor uttam thank, thank you, you sir thank you thank you very much uh, anshulok sir will answer the question during his discussion uh, as a panel hello may we okay. may, I, may i hear from professor maliha short comment please hello 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 sir समय Good time. Go on. Professor Maliha Hakim. Hmm. I am honored to be here uh, okay. with uh, participation uh, uh, in this session. Uh, I am very much uh, glad, and uh, I want to say that uh, Pahari is very much excellent and covered all the things. And uh, today's discussion is very, very fruitful, and will be uh, will be. Uh, um, very much uh, fruitful and will be help us in future thank you thank you maliha professor rohit krishnan sir please adan rohit sir yes sir yes sir uh, rohit sir please unmute yourself sir apne ke request pathano hoyeche uh, rohit krishnan sir ke bolchilam sir are you here on the floor professor rohit krishnan sir apnar mic ta unmute koren sir रखार प्रैक्टिकल स्टाडी कर डायरेक्टली 
লক্ষ লক্ষ লোক মারা যাচ্ছে সেখানে কোভিড এর জন্য রোগ মারা যাচ্ছে কোভিড এর সাথে অন্যান্য মর কোভিড এর জন্য মারা যাচ্ছে তার সাথে অন্যান্য ডিজিজ প্রসেস গুলো যে স্ট্রোক বলেন সিজার বলেন বা কোগুলো পেটি বলেন সবকিছু অবশ্যই আমরা অবশ্যই কথাটাকে মানতে রাজি হচ্ছে যে কোভিড ভাইরাসটা বিভিন্ন প্যাথোফিজিওলজি করে বডির ভিতরে হয়তো কোনো ভাবে এটা অটোইমিউন রিঅ্যাকশন করে তার প্রেক্ষিতে হয়তো কিছু কিছু সাইন সিম্পটম তৈরি হচ্ছে আমার কথা হলো যে আমরা যে জিনিসগুলো এখন আমাদের সামনে আসছে বাই টাইম সময়ের সাথে সাথে অর্থাৎ কোভিড ইনফেকশন ছড়াচ্ছে প্রচুর রুগী অ্যাফেক্টেড হচ্ছে সেই সঙ্গে অনেকে মারাও যাচ্ছে এবং বেশিরভাগ রুগী ভালো হয়ে যাচ্ছে যারা মারা যাচ্ছে তাদের বেলা যদি অটোপসি করে ভালোভাবে ভাইরাসটা ডিটেক্ট করে আমাদেরকে বলতে পারে তাহলে উই ক্যান সে বাংলাদেশিদের মধ্যে রয়েছে ভারতীয় মধ্যে রয়েছে আমরা এখন মরে সব ভূত হয়ে যেতাম not complete conception the completely amra bolte parbo ta howar amar je bhalo ek panelist ra achen senior professor ra achen onar aro bhalo bolte parben thank you very much pahari dr manavendra for your nice and elaborate discussion it will enhance our knowledge for us and everybody thank you all thank you for square from spigal give me the chance to be here with you thanks thank you sir thank you sir professor kajitin mo sir please নিউরোলজি <laughs> the thing is that the covid virus is new to the world so we do not know now that the network is somewhat better of the virus we do not eventually the might have some kind of long term effect of maybe neurological maybe non neurological maybe psychiatric research are there covid does not leave the patient in a very state of the art that he was previously before the covid and they might have some amount of residual effect after the suffering from covid the effect may be neurological or maybe non neurological anyway over the time or with that best of the time we will know in details about the nature of the virus and its effect and different systems but it is now clear that that, that this virus really involves the multiple organ because it really causes viremia it is most tropic when it goes in lung it remains most in the lung when it goes in the brain you have gi most in the gi when it goes to brain most in the brain but from lung to the seminated where from J to this is one of the advantages. <laughs> the thing is that uh, Sarah, uh, Dr. Dr. Pahari is concerned about that. Could be done. Uh, I must I must uh, I must and at the same time I would like to address my colleagues in the country that 
by the time you have noticed a good number of cases of COVID and neurological cases. As Professor Kuraishi mentioned that there are a few cases in modern hospitals. It means we have <clears throat> few cases in similarly in Bangabund University, they might have request some of maybe Dr. Gurudas will take the lead to collect all those cases from different parts of the country and reporting because this is very important for our country. All the cities are published from China, Denmark, <laughs> China, Italy, hey, what you, is it? not a single from Bangladesh or the Pakistan. I request my hey, team team to compile all the and make a sheet. Hey, can, can't you hear me? developing country not even from yes, India, not, not from Pakistan, not from Bangladesh. We request for the Amras Kalogana to come to Shabaje to Atsi after that. The hospital regulation of case will be put to Tori Koren. I mean, Guruzaske died to Divo. The Eguli collection for the act of compiled Korajano. I mean, sincere thanks to Shabaike for enjoying the session. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Professor Arsulok, sir, please, sir. Thank you very much. Um, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Sound yes, sir. Okay. Good. I mean, uh, I start because I had so many things to sum up. I mean, to advise you from yes. whatever you have discussed. First of all, let me express my what heartfelt thanks to Manubendo because I saw him briefly in various seminars and I liked him because of his smartness. And today I have the chance to see him how smart he is. Economy or lecture Jawar Age Ami Ami Bangladesh Balokuri Bujaya Bulli, the Uttame Ruttor Prosta Ruttor Tamku Shankhebi. It is a very interesting finding at a Karolinska University, uh, Dr. Hugo published for a seven meter scientific journal, Ashar Age, Tomat Telegraph, the New York Times, Eglot Beirut. এর মূল সাইন্টিফিক পেপার এখনো বের হয়নি সুতরাং আমি যতটুকু দেখেছি এবং আমি এর পরেও আমার ইন্টারেস্টেড যারা আমার বন্ধু বান্ধবদের সাথে আলাপ করেছি হোয়াট ইট ইজ ফার্স্ট অফ অল ইট ইজ আ ভেরি ইন্টারেস্টিং ফাইন্ডিং যে আমাদের লিনেজের সঙ্গে নিয়ানডারথালের কোনো লিংক নাই নিয়ানডারথাল 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 মুভ টুয়ার্ডস ইউরোপ এবং অল এবং অনেক অনেক জিন আফ্রিকা থেকে মানুষ মুভ করে যখন এই রাইটের দিকে আসে দে ওয়ার অস্ট্রেলয়েড মঙ্গলয়েড অ্যান্ড দে ফাইনালি ওয়েন্ট ডাউন 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 টু নিউজিল্যান্ড অলসো তো এখানে কি করে এই জিনটা ঢুকলো আবিষ্কার করেছে কিন্তু এইটা অ্যাকচুয়ালি ওয়াজ টু প্রিভেন্ট দ্যাল সিক্সটি ভাইরাস কিন্তু এই দিদেন ভাইরাসটা পরে পরটিতে এটা ভালোর জন্যই দিয়েছিল ওই জিনটা ডেভেলপ করেছিল কিন্তু পরে এখন ব্যাড রিয়াকশন আদৌ কি করছে কোয়েশ্চেন ইজ ফর ইট ইজ স্টিল পারফর্মিং দ্য সেম বেনিফিশিয়াল এফেক্ট যদি সত্যি সিক্সটি পার্সেন্ট অফ বাংলাদেশি হোয়াই অনলি ইন বাংলাদেশি ইউ আর দ্য সেম লিনেজ ইন সাউথ ইন্ডিয়া 
Sri Lanka, or and also down there, I'm the Raki Lili. Tahole Ora, Amadir Shateki Topa. Tahole Ki, it Abadir Jono, Abadir Comorbidity, Tatashoto, Amadir Mitur Haki Komache, Bangladesh, Ojinta. Eta Eta Costana say it as he could have it. Kinto, England, Jeglo sample or any say. Random sample. I mean, pura paper ta dekhni. Abang, amar sab bondura bolse. We have to get the pura paper. What was the bias? What was the method of collecting the samples? Who are the samples targeted? Kiba ve niste sab kisu mile ita dekta hoy. So ita ekono oneke ekta chance observationi bolche. Er piche ki udesho lokho kichu lamra ekono jani na. So ami tomar sathe ita niye pore personally golpo korbo. So this is still. A controversial hypothesis, observation, or just an inference. It has no proman kora bakia se. Second is, ami bolbo the organizers, ami onik din thore bolchi. You do this, this type of meeting, and finally you made it happen. So I thank you, organizers. Akon, it is impossible to cover COVID neurology in one go or one day. So, that is okay. This is the basic concept about neurology and COVID. Kintu, neurology and COVID ke act in a act session impossible. So, I get a atmosphere. They akono eta solid picture nine. Akono, these are all observational. So, Tomade Amade Jetta Kortahe, they. Solid kisu bolar age, amader ke koyekta jinish mathay rakhte hobe. More of a personal case presentation from now, and panel thakbe, and then you prepare yourself to explain. And then arakta jinish hobe tomader je ekta question orde se bar bar. Ita ki direct COVID neurology symptom or non COVID? Definitely. Manobendro that I say COVID itself can cause some neurological damage. Amra eta ton to to meninisi j tomar AC red receptors take a shurukore tomar j ram eight sorry kibal our olfactory nerve the shorasurio directly involved kore. So these two are facts. এখন যে কোশ্চেনটা তুলেছে কোভিড কি স্ট্রোক করে কোভিড কি স্ট্রোকের কারণ না কোশ্চেনটা একটু ভিন্ন রকম হয়ে গেল কোশ্চেনটা এভাবে না আমরা কি জানি যে স্ট্রোকের কারণ কি আমরা যা জানি সব রিস্ক ফ্যাক্টর সো যেগুলো যেগুলো ভাস্কুলার টেরিটরি অথবা স্ট্রোকের ঘটনা ঘটায় দিস আর অল রিস্ক ফ্যাক্টর কোভিড ডাইরেক্টলি প্রমাণ করতে গেলে ইউ हैव टू ফিরোজ বলেছে কক হাইপোথিসিস পূরণ করতে হবে বাট डेफिनेटলি ইন কোভিড সিচুয়েশন Stroke at one of the common findings. Shejun Nami Abar Boli, Fumoto Kichu Kabar Nakure, Covid a commonest, commonest manifestation Gulani, Majamaja Busta, Vejaman, Maliha Polchulo, Ajusi, etc. These are the symptoms. Shoksoma extend Kora at the Javana, Sabarakno at Kanohoi, Akon Akta question, Din Mamadi question, Doriami Boli. Until otherwise proved, any neurological symptom, a mood. Whether this has got anything linked to COVID. Do you remember what the use of knowing it, whether it is a neuro, uh, neurological symptom of COVID or not? Management is all the same. Treatment wise, I am on part of the party. All right. Now I am coming to that question. Treatment wise, I am on part of the party. Now the question is uh, is it linked to? Or it is the same term. Definitely COVID symptom code. Definitely conta conta code jamon bollam. Uh, either directly encephalitis or or encephalopathy. It is definitely one of the commonest symptom of alteration of sensorium. Definitely a common symptom. Then stroke and etc. And other remote possibilities, GBS, etc. etc. Jodi eta. COVID or Juno Hoy, that's fine. It's a case report. Jodi Nahoi, Tobu management would be the same. Amar question Hoche, man Amar suggestion of Akon, J Amade Jordi Tahabe, Duita Jinishe, Amish Hopsomo Jetaboli, repeatedly 
যেহেতু এখনো কামিং আপ কামিং আপ কামিং আপ আজকে যেমন পাহাড়ি বিদেশি কেস নোট গুলা হাইলাইট করেছে আমি চাই আমরা প্রায় দেখি তোমাদের ওই সোশ্যাল মিডিয়াতে তোমরা পরস্পরের মধ্যে আলাপ করছো দ্যাট ইস গুড অ্যান্ড দিস হোয়াট আই ওয়ান্ট তোমরা মাঝে মাঝেই কেস প্রেজেন্টেশন পিকুলিয়ার যেটা পৃথিবীর অনেক জায়গাতে হয় নিউরো রেডিওলজি মিটিং ক্লিনিক্যাল মিটিং সেখানে সপ্তাহে একদিন বিভিন্ন বিভিন্ন থার্সিয়ারি লেভেল সেন্টারে বিভিন্ন ট্রাস্ট থেকে যারা ওই টার্সিয়ারি লেভেলের হসপিটালের আন্ডারে আছে সেখানে এসে তাদের ডিফিকাল্ট কেসগুলো ডিসকাস করে এবং সাজেশন পায় তো তোমাদেরকে আবার হয়তো ফিরোজকে বলি এই যতক্ষণ কোভিড আসছে আমি জানি না ইনশাল্লাহ হয়তো তাড়াতাড়ি আমরা মুক্তি পাব তো মাঝে মাঝে একটা করে এক্সপেরিয়েন্স শেয়ার করার জন্য চালু রাখো এটা ভালো তিন নম্বর যেটা করতে হবে কমন দুটো সাজেশন কমন সিমটম নিয়ে ডিসকাস করো দুই নম্বর হলো ক্রনিক কন্ডিশন অফ নিউরোলজি কেয়ার দ্য ক্রনিক ডিজিজ এর ম্যানেজমেন্টে আদৌ কোনো পরিবর্তন আছে কিনা ফর এক্সাম্পল সিআইডিপি ফর এক্সাম্পল এম এস এম এ এম জি মাসিনিয়া গ্রাভি যেখানে যেখানে আমাদের স্টেরয়েড ব্যবহার করতে হয় এম জি ইজ এ ভেরি ভেরি ট্রিকি সিচুয়েশন উত্তমের প্রশ্নের সাথেই আনছি যে আজকেই দেখলাম বাংলাদেশের জেনেটিশিয়ানরা কিছু মানে ইউনিক সিকুয়েন্সিং দেখেছে আমাদের যেমন যেটা কমন যেটা বলছে সাধারণত কোন ভ্যাকসিনে নাকি কাজ করে না দিস ইজ এ ব্যাড ফাইন কিন্তু আমাদের ন্যাচারাল হিস্ট্রিতে কিন্তু দেখা যাচ্ছে আমরা মনে হয় অটোমেটিকালি হার্ড ইউনিটি ডেভেলপ করে ফেলছি সেক্ষেত্রে ইটালিয়ান ভাইরাসে ক্রোমোজোম নাইন ইজ লিঙ্কড এবিও ব্লাড গ্রুপের আর আমাদের জানি না কোন ব্লাড গ্রুপ লিঙ্ক কে জন্য বলছিল এ সেক্ষেত্রে ক্রোমোজম থ্রি আর ক্রোমোজম নাইন এর মধ্যে স্টাডি করতে হবে আমি আর একটা কোয়েশ্চেন ছুড়ে দিব নারায়ণকে ইউ সলভ দিস আমি তোমাকে পরে জিজ্ঞেস করবো বিকজ নারায়ণ দেখি ভালো স্টাডি করছে আমি চিন্তা করছিলাম যে সাইটোকাইন স্ট্রং একটা জিনিস দ্য মেকানিজম আর আইরিস যেটাকে আমরা প্রায় দেখেছি আমি এখানে থাকছি চিকিৎসার একটা পর্যায়ে মারাত্মক রিয়াকশন হতো তো এডস এর ওই এডস এর খেলাতেও আইরিস হতো কোয়েন যে ওই যে কম্বাইন্ড থেরাপি যখন দেওয়া হয় ফোড্রা থেরাপি তখন এক পর্যায়ে গিয়ে আইরিস হয় তোমার লেপ্রোসিত যখন ড্যাপসোনের এক পর্যায়ে অথবা ওই যে খাওয়ার সময়ে এটা হয় তাহলে তুমি একটু খেয়াল করবা তো যেহেতু তুমি কোভিড হসপিটালের সঙ্গে ডাইরেক্টলি লিং যে মারাত্মকভাবেড করা হয় উইথ দিস থিংস আই উড ফিনিশ দিস হেয়ার and i left some question so we'll see again then thank you manavendra for your smart lecture and this is the basis you continue this 
ফোন এন্ড সবাই বলছে প্রফেসর দিন মোহাম্মদ বলছে সবাই বলছে যে তোমরা রেকর্ড করো রেকর্ড করো শুধু রেকর্ডও করবা সেই জন্য আমার ফাইনাল সাজেশন সাম ওয়ান শুড টেক এ লিড টু মেক এ মাল্টি সেন্টার স্টাডি গ্রুপ সেম কোশ্চেন এয়ার সেম চিন্তাধারা পুট ইন করো এক একজন এক এক চিন্তা থেকে না করে দেন মেক এ মাল্টি মাল্টি সেন্টার স্টাডি এই স্কোয়ারকে বলো দে ক্যান হেল্প অনুরোধ যে একটা মাল্টি সেন্টার স্কিম করো দুই নম্বর মাঝে মাঝে পরস্পরের সাথে থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাছ এভরিবাডি Thank you indeed, sir. It has been a wonderful talk from you. And so far, it has been very uh, excited and, and in-depth discussion about the COVID-19. Still many, many more discussions to come. We have come near to the end of the program. And today's program was sponsored by Square Pharmaceuticals. May I now request Mr. Mahmoudur Rahman Puriya to say something. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, let me first uh, start uh, forming my gratitude to the, all the frontline doctors who have uh, uh, given their life in this pandemic uh, and all other frontline soldiers. And from Square, uh, we always believe in working with the uh, scientific partners and we always believe in working good to the uh, mankind, human, humanity of Bangladesh. We have been trying for the last 62 years for doing the quality works uh, in Bangladesh and uh, in other countries. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Manavendra, uh, sir, uh, who have given a very nice presentation uh, and uh, to uh, gi- uh, given all the uh, panel of experts who have given their advices and suggestions uh, for uh, such a uh, pertinent topic in this pandemic. And, uh, Let's again thank you uh, all from the moderator to our p- people who have coordinated this uh, webinar. Uh, 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 thank you for your cooperation and joining this webinar, making this webinar successful. Thank you all from Square Pharmaceuticals. Thank you. May I now request President SNB Professor Firuz Ahmed Kursh to wrap up the program? Yeah, thank you. Am I, uh, am I audible? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, yes. I must thank Dr. Manavendra for his excellent uh, presentation. Shabai bolo sir, sutra ore arbeshi arbeshi dhono bhabde ne pare. Oshubida ase sutra. Amar dhono bhabte sabse mare last dile me mung beshi kore dila Manavendra ke. Karon he is he is very close to me and amade shakoreli mane snehir patro. Jaihok. And secondly, I must I must give thanks to the panel of experts. We have passed more than two hours. So two hours of the time is a very boring one. A boring na feel kore, shabai jehabe actively aung shunye chhe, aamra eta te khub maane e shantoshto plus A. Third number, our moderator, Vikas, our scientific secretary, Professor Vikas, he has done a very wonderful job. Also, I thank the Dr. Adnan, who is conducting whole of the whole of this webinar, and also special thanks to Square Pharmaceuticals. All the eye staffs of this Square Pharmaceuticals do have taken the share of this webinar. Lastly, I must thank our neurologist. Their presence has made this webinar a very successful one. আমরা এটা আরো আগায় নিতে চাই কারণ আমরা সোসাইটি থেকে এই সময় দেখেছি যে যেহেতু আমরা এই সময় ম্যাক্সিমাম সময় বাড়িতে বসে থাকি কিংবা বাড়ির থেকে বাইরে যাচ্ছি প্লাসে যাচ্ছি সন্ধ্যার সময় চেম্বারও ম্যাক্সিমাম জনের বন্ধ যার ফলে আমরা এই সময়টুকু ইউটিলাইজ করতে চাই উইথ আওয়ার এডুকেশন আনে এর মধ্যে অনেকগুলো অ্যাডভাইস এসছে আমরা অ্যাডভাইস গুলা লিখে রাখছি এবং আমরা আশা করি এগুলো আমাদের মানে পোর্টালে প্লাস এতে আমরা শেয়ার করব শেয়ার করার পরে উইল সি দা হোয়েদার যে আমরা কোনটা কোনটাকে অ্যাচিভ করতে পারি কোনটা কোনটা আমরা এটা আগিয়ে নিতে পারি আমি এই বলে সকলকে ধন্যবাদ জানাই আজকের প্রোগ্রাম আপাতত শেষ করছি হোপ টু মিট ইউ ফিউচার এগেন উইথ ইন এ ভেরি শর্ট টাইম উইথ এ নিউ topic with a new webinar from the Society of the Revolution of Bangladesh. Thank you. Thank you very much again, all of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, uh, yes, we can leave now. Uh, yes, yeah. sir. 